Had a question the other day where someone on our YouTube channel was asking where should the UV light be mounted in the HVAC system? And I wanna give you a few things to think about as you decide that. I would say in a lot of cases, it's not normally something a homeowner should be concerned about, but in today's day and age where a lot of homeowners are smarter than the pros that they're hiring, it may be something that you might have to take control of yourself. So ultimately, if you have a heating and air system, you have maybe a technician that's told you about a UV light, it's something you're considering, Maybe you found them online. Maybe you saw one of my videos, but regardless of the situation, you've got a UV light and you now have this entire system, if you will. You've got a return duct, you've got your coil, you've got your fan motor, you've got your maybe backup heat, depending on the type of system, you may have a furnace. The point being, you could mount that light anywhere in that system and it'd be very possible that it only shine on a small percentage of that system based on where you mounted it. If you installed it just after the air handler right in the supply duct, there is not going to be a single bit of light that reaches that evaporator coil. There's too much in between. There's too many obstacles, if you will, that's going to block that light. And to be very clear, this may seem like common sense, but a lot of folks, maybe they just don't think about it. Components in that system cannot be sterilized unless the light is shining directly on them. In fact, you can Google it. There's studies that show that it has to be within a certain distance of the light, of the bulb, if you will. So just installing it in there, it's not like a filter where it's going to say filter all of the particles that go past that filter and so everything after the filter is only receiving good clean air uv lights don't work that way so back to the matter at hand where do you mount it where do you mount it in that system to get the most out of the product that you're installing one last thing i want to point out before i answer that question specifically and that is just realize there are certain components that are not good with uv light in fact years ago there were media filters that would literally melt when you install a UV light close to them, or there were primary drain pans that would become super brittle. I feel like a lot of the plastic ones get brittle over time anyway, but I do think they've come a long way. They're definitely better than they used to be. And if you install a light with some systems, it could affect all of that. Now, does that mean you should just completely do away with the UV light because of some of the downsides? Anybody that's seen any of my videos know that that's not how I feel. I actually am a believer in them. I've seen what they can do. I don't think they're snake oil. I had a customer years ago that he had a system that had all this black gunk. We installed a UV light and then came back a few months later to do his preventative maintenance. And it was like a shiny nickel. That evaporator coil looked almost brand new again. And I'm telling you, I've said it a hundred times to friends and customers and even on this channel that I wish I would have taken a before picture. The after picture was so different that I wished I'd have got that before picture. So finally, where do we mount this thing? I think ultimately the answer to that question is where are you having the problem? Now we're gonna get to, if you're not having a problem, where I would mount it in just a moment. But if you have a problem, then I believe the UV light is your solution. It's the Superman here, right? It's the one that's gonna be fighting the battle here and winning the battle, you know? And so if I had a bunch of microbial growth or mold or whatever that is that's growing in there, wherever it's growing, I'm mounting the light to where it's at least gonna shine on that. Again, you would think would be common sense, but I see it all the time where folks just have one place that they always mount the light. I've seen some folks mount multiple lights in there, you know, on the return side of the evaporator coil, the supply side of the evaporator coil, and then further down the line. Is there a one size fits all when it comes to that? I don't think so because I've seen some systems that have a big problem with that return side of the evaporator coil. I've seen some systems that have a huge problem with the primary drain pan. It's starting to get a bunch of gunk in there. You clean it out and you come back a few months later and there it is again. I've seen some systems have build up on the fan wheel itself and it just keeps coming back. And we've talked about filtration and other things that you can talk about. But the bottom line is if you're installing that light before the evaporator coil, but your problem is later on in the air handler or furnace, then you're not actually attacking the problem that's pretty simple right install it to where it's going to resolve the issue at least one light that'll resolve that issue now if you don't have a problem let's say you have a brand new system or a system that you take very good care of but you're doing a little bit of preventative measures here and you're going to have a uv light installed you don't necessarily have something that you can point at and say yep there's the problem 
That's when I want to resolve. That's where I want the light installed. I've heard different thought processes on this. In fact, I've sat through classes where teachers talked about different theories and where maybe the light should go. I can tell you one thing that a lot of manufacturers have gotten to a point where they know that, you know, products like this are going to be installed and a lot of A coils. So a lot of evaporator coils that are in the shape of an A, they'll even stamp the plate with a little circle there for you to install products like that. And at least that's what I've been told that that's what that stamps for. So you pop that circle out, mount your light there. And I think ultimately, if I'm going to mount a light in my own home or in my mother's home, and I want it to do the most good, then I'm looking at two problem areas the most. There are multiple problem areas in a lot of different homes, but there's two main problem areas where we do see microbial growth and things that we wanna try to attack with ultraviolet light. And those two areas would be the return side of the evaporator coil. And I say the return side because that's the side that's getting hit the most. Now, does that mean this light is gonna filter out particles? No, that's not what they do. They don't filter, but they do sterilize. They do shine on things and make it clean, right? So I've seen evaporator coils that you know are sterilized and clean but be super dusty and still need to be maintained and still could maybe even use some filtration in that system. The return side of the evaporator coil is where I have seen systems that don't have ultraviolet light that don't have any sort of air quality products. And that is where you can start to see things growing and air's passing over it and it's blowing right back into your home. So that's the first place. And the second place for me is that primary drain pan. The hope and dream is that when water does come off of the evaporator coil and it drip onto that pan, that it drain out and you never have any issues. But the truth of the matter is, there are sometimes things growing or things developing in that drain pan. If I can mount a light in that system, so if it's depending on the orientation, they may not even be possible, but if it is possible, I'm mounting that light to where it can shine on as much of the return side of the coil as possible and as much of the primary drain pan as possible. And the last thing I'll say is not all UV lights are created equal. In fact, I've laid hands on some that, you know, they don't seem like much at all. There may be a particular technology that there just don't seem like there's much there. And then I've seen other ultraviolet lights that would, in some commercial systems, that look like they would just shine the entire country. So down in the description of this video, I'm going to put a few of the UV lights that I have seen that seem like they're decent quality. Let me know your thoughts. Have you installed one or are you thinking of installing a UV light? Has this been a concern on where to mount it? What makes the most sense? I'd love to hear about that down in the comment section below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about reusing ductwork when replacing a system and where a lot of people make mistakes. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.